Hello, welcome back to my channel. Today I have a couple of holiday inspired DIYs for you guys. Here at the Sykes household we celebrate Christmas every year, 25th of December. And so I thought it would be a good time to break out my craft bin and see if I can whip up some little projects for the house just to make it a little bit more festive. So I originally planned on doing three of these, but the third DIY that I tried came out horribly, horribly wrong. I definitely consider it like a Pinterest fail. So I'm gonna share that one first, just to get it out of the way. So I saw this picture on Pinterest, super cute, right? And I was like, those are adorable. I can definitely put those in my house somewhere. So this is how the DIY ended up. First of all, the string was horribly, horribly challenging to work with. I had to wrap it around a candlestick and dip it in a cup of glue just to kind of figure out how to make this work. I tried everything, I tried brushing it on and all that jazz and then once I was done wrapping it around, um, this is what I was left with. Well, I was like, okay, I can see where this is going. I even put like little imitation ornaments with puffy paint and, but my problem is when you go to unravel them, this one kind of unraveled properly but it looks more like the hat from Harry Potter than a Christmas tree. I don't know, not, I'm not digging it. And then the second one, because I made small, medium, large, unraveled like this, and I still didn't even get all the wax paper off. So this I would definitely say is a pin fail, or a DIY fail, whatever you want to call it. I guess this thing is salvageable. It just doesn't look very cute. It's not very cute. No. The other two did turn out very cute, and I will show you those. So the stuff you're going to need, I actually had laying around. If you're semi-crafty, you probably have this stuff lying around too. You're going to need colored cardstock. And the colors that they had there, which you can pick any colors that you want, but they had orange, green, blue, red, and yellow. And so I got that cardstock, and then you need gray colored cardstock for like the base of the bulb. You're also going to need some kind of yarn. I had this one lying around, so I went with this. I don't know what it's called. My mom used to call it goat string. I think it's because it feels like goat. <laughs> you're also going to need like a ruler, a pen. I don't think I put this in the picture, but you're going to need glue, tape, something sticky. Oh, and then you obviously need scissors to cut the paper. First things first, you're going to want to do all the cutting. You want to cut your gray cardstock into one and a quarter inch by four inch strips. I decided to do 15 bulbs, which is three of each colored bulb, so I needed to cut out 15 strips. Then go ahead and cut out your colored strips as well, and these ones you're going to cut to one inch by eight and a half inches. Once you're done with that, we're going to start making the little base of the bulbs. And I'll show you how to do one and then you can just kind of know that you're going to repeat this process 15 times. So to make the little base of the bulb, you're going to have to fold. They said to use like a scoring tool, but that's just a fancy word for folding it and pushing it down to give yourself a nice crease. So you're going to want to essentially fold it until it's an octagon. So fold it in half, fold those two sides in half, and then fold those four sections in half. So you have a total of eight sections. You're going to take two of those sections and overlap them, glue them together, so now you basically have a septagon, I think it's called a septagon. What's the one with seven sides? Let me Google it. So seven sides is a heptagon, you're going to create a heptagon. And then using your hole punch, you're going to punch two holes that are kind of across from each other on the sides. So you should have the peaks up top, two holes here, and then here you're going to have like two more sides, and then the very back that you glued together. So a point, holes, and then this shape. Is this visual helping? Now to make the bulb portion of it, you're gonna take your colored pieces of cardstock, fold those in half, you don't have to like intensely crease it, but you're gonna get both ends and pinch them together and kind of bring your hands closer so that you're creating the shape of the bulb. And keep doing it as many times as you want. Looking at the picture though, I feel like they did crease these areas a little bit, so don't be afraid to mold your paper the way that you want to. To use a hole puncher to punch a hole at the very top of that and then thread it all together with your string of your choice and then BAM! That's how you do it. I will admit this can get kind of tedious, especially when you're making 15 pieces. All those little creases in the gray bulbs can be very tedious. So if you want to skip that and just make a circular socket, go for it. Um, I think I enjoy the attention to detail and I didn't mind 
sitting there increasing while watching an episode of Doctor Who. So go with what you feel and then you string them together and get this adorable little garland. The last one is by far my favorite. I like it even more than I like the garland and definitely more than I like the Christmas trees. These are little window clings. These are actually made out of puffy paint and again super inexpensive and really fun to make in my opinion. For this you're going to need some colored puffy paint. You can pick any colors that you like but I went with a dark blue, a light blue and then this like semi-transparent glittery one. You're also going to need wax paper and then a printout of some snowflakes. So I just went to Google Images, Googled in snowflake image and that's where I found this sheet of six snowflakes. Gives you a variety, there's a bunch of different sizes, so I feel like this is the perfect option. If I can find it again, I will link it down below. So on a hard flat surface, you're going to want to tape down some wax paper and then tape the snowflake images underneath. So you should obviously be able to see them through the wax paper. Maybe make sure that you print them in black and not kind of colored. And then you just want to trace the images with puffy paint. Couple of tips and tricks, definitely don't make them too thin um, because you want them to be kind of sturdy. And they definitely don't have to be perfectly aligned with the black ink. They can be a little sloppy. Every snowflake is different. I think it adds a little character and just makes them look a little bit more fun. So when you're done chasing them out, your wax paper will look like this. I'll just leave them to dry. I went ahead and let mine dry overnight and then carefully peel them off. They will come off because it's wax paper, but it's not as simple as like zoop. Of the different shapes, this one here that kind of has like much more going on. It's a much more solid shape. That one is the most sturdy. This is the second most sturdy and then these ones that don't have a lot going on, they just have like very thin lines going out. Those are incredibly challenging to get off without breaking them, especially me having nails. I've not had nails for a minute and I'm like it was really hard to do DIYs with nails. So, <laughs> and I was really hesitant about that like glittery white one, but this is probably my favorite of the three colors. I just think it looks so pretty and I plan on making much, much more of these to put everywhere. And then you can really put them on your window or anywhere. I have one on my mirror. They're just so pretty. And like I said, this glittery one has to be by far my most fave. Just give it a little press. That's what I like to do. And give it a little press. And then, well, bam! Super cute, right? I know it's coming off kind of white, but in person it's like pretty transparent and it looks super glittery. And when the sun shines through, like if you put them on a window, gorgeous. So that is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment down below letting me know which one is your favorite. And let me know if you've ever tried a Pinterest fail. What was like your worst Pinterest fail? Because this was my first. This is my first time I've tried something for Pinterest where it ended up not looking like the picture or at least like anywhere close to the picture. If you guys ever redo any of these, be sure to send me a picture. You can find me on Twitter and Snapchat and Instagram. All of the links for all of my social media sites are in the description box down below. I will also try to make sure that I get a complete list of materials down there. Sometimes it takes me a minute to finish, so if you're watching this video and it's not down there, just check back. It'll, it'll be there. It'll be there soon, I promise. So as always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!